Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. On this channel, you can discover the new things on the world. What the special thing today I would like to show you. Now we go. The top 10 venomous snakes in the world. From rattlers to sea serpents, these snakes deliver a seriously potent and toxic cocktail of venom, bite for bite. Snakes are highly effective predators and some species that rely on venom for hunting and self-defense can deliver a bite toxic enough to kill animals many times their size. The bite of a king cobra, for instance, can kill an elephant. Yet, despite the fear of snakes that has such a deep hold in the human psyche, the critters end out to get us. Snakes don't attack people says Luke Walton, collection manager in herpetology at the Kansas University Biodiversity Institute and Natural History Museum. They are most often startled or put in a situation where they feel the need to defend themselves, and they do so by the only means they have available, escape, mask, and bite. It just so happens that the means the snake have is venom. The lethality of venom is determined by a range of factors including toxicity, how much is delivered in a single bite, and where in the body a bite is sustained. But a common scientific measure is LD50, the minimal lethal dose needed to kill 50% of animals in laboratory testing. Based on that metric and focusing specifically on intramuscular bites, these are 10 of the most toxic venomous snakes on the planet. Number one is a timber rattlesnake. Ranging from eastern North America to as far as Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, the timber rattlesnake is the only rattler species in the populous northeastern United States and is considered endangered or threatened throughout much of that region. Found mostly in woodlands, timber rattlers prey on rodents, birds, insects, and amphibians and are known to hunt during daytime in spring and autumn then switching to nocturnal hunts in warm weather. The snake's highly toxic and relatively complex. Venom, long fangs, and high venom yield make it potentially one of the America's most little serpents. However, thimble raptors are generally considered shy and nervous and are quick to seek shelter when encountered the field. The species tends to rattle and faint extensively before striking, though it will stand its ground if harassed. Number 2 is the Russell's Viper. A notoriously bad-tempered snake, the Russell's Viper is responsible for roughly half of the fatal snake bites in its geographic range. That's remarkable considering that its expansive distribution from Southeast Asia to the Indian subcontinent and east to Taiwan overlaps with crates, cobras, and several other noteworthy venomous snakes. The snake's cranky disposition and its focus on rats and lizards, which often live close to humans, as favored prey might account for this lethality. Another contributing factor is the extreme complexity of the snake's venom. A Russell's Venom features a really unique cocktail of components that just hammers all parts of the body, Wilson says. It's definitely not a snake you want to tangle with. Number 3 is the Copperhead. America's most common venomous snake and the source of more snake bites in the U.S. than any other venomous species. The copperhead can be found all across eastern and southern North America in a wide diversity of habitat ranging from uplands to woodlands to grasslands. The copperhead is a surprising enchant on this list, given its reputation for many bites and few fatalities. Then might be explained by the relatively low volume of venom delivered in a typical strike. Young copperheads are really hunters, wiggling their green trip tail to lure in small lizards and rodents. The knee and tail tip disappears as they age. In confrontations with people, copperheads generally favor flight over fight. Number 4 is the Belcher's Sea Snake. Like the other three sea snakes on this list, the Belcher's Sea Snake is found from the Eastern Indian Ocean through Southeast Asia and into Northern Coastal Australia. 
the species tends to stick to reef areas where they prey on fish and go out of their way to avoid human reef divers and snorkelers. All the sea snakes are relatively docile, Welton says, and you really have to pester them to get to bite you. In addition, the belcher's small mouth and short fangs mean any bite is unlikely to penetrate in a wetsuit. If you do not encounter one while snorkeling, Wilson adds, appreciate it is a rare opportunity to see one in the wild rather than a cause for fear. Unless you mess with it, it's not going to mess with you. Number 5 is the common death adder. While fearsomely named, this Australian snake annually causes fewer deaths down under than a wide range of animals, including kangaroos, bees, dogs, cattle, and ponies. Considered a master of camouflage, this ambush predator covers itself with leaf litter and debris, then lies in wait for the forest floor for small mammals, birds, and amphibians, using its tail, which resembles a grub, as a lure. Curiously, the snake's appetite for amphibians is making it a lot less common. Others that others feed on the invasive cane toad, which is itself toxic with poison glands that are deadly to the snakes and other reptiles such as turtles and crocodiles that feed on them. Number 6 is the olive brown sea snake. The most common sea snake in the northern Australian coast, the olive brown can grow to 6.5 feet long and can spend 2 hours underwater before it meets the surface for a breath. Found as deep as 230 feet, this snake more commonly prefers shallow reef flats where it preys on fish, crabs, and ponds. Like most sea snakes, it has a paddle tail that helps it swim. But the olive brown tail also has a light sensitive photoreceptors which are thought to enable the snake to stay completely hidden to avoid predators. Unlike rattlesnake and other vipers, whose venom is primarily hemotoxic, or causing severe tissue damage and internal bleeding, sea snake venom is dominated by neurotoxins. A bite often causes little pain at the site, but can cause massive systematic failures, including paralysis and respiratory collapse, often with a delayed onset that makes poisonings difficult to reverse even when anti-venom is available. The snake's preference for hunting, the same night feeding fish targeted by bottom prowlers, makes it a potential hazard for fishermen hauling nets. Number 7 is the common yellow-lipped sea grave. Sharing the same geographic range as the olive brown and belcher sea snakes, the common yellow-lipped sea grave is one of the few sea snakes that comes ashore which can make a moonlight stroll along a Southeast Asian beach potentially perilous. I've been to parts of Indonesia where it's not uncommon on a good night to see 10 or 20 on the same stretch of beach. Welton says, Relatively docile in water, they're even less aggressive on land because their movements are much more deliberate and awkward. Most people who get bitten by these snakes likely step on them because they're not watching where they're walking. Number 8 is the many banded grave. In Southeast Asia, where the most toxic snakes are sea dwellers, the many banded grave stands out as deadly terrestrial species. A nocturnal hunter in lowland marshy areas that preys primarily on fish, the grave is also known to eat lizards, frogs, eels, rodents, and other snakes, including members of its own species. The extremely powerful venom, composed mainly of neurotoxins, has been estimated to produce mortality rates as high as 70 to 100 percent. In 2001, herpetologist Joe Slowinski died 29 hours after being bitten by a crate that had been misidentified as the white-banded wolf snake, a harmless crate looked like. Number 9 is the blue leaf sea crate. Found near coral reefs and rocky areas along the seashores of Southeast Asia, this vibrantly colored four foot long serpent was the first venomous sea snake known to science, described by Linnaeus, the father of taxonomy in his classic 1735 treatise, 
Systema Nutri. Blue Lip creates docile and slow to bite. Inject a venom dominated by postsynaptic neurotoxins that causes little or no local effects but can lead to paralysis, muscle damage, or bleeding within hours. The snakes are known for their unique strategy for keeping warm by curling in a nesting burrows created by wedge-tailed shearwaters. Research shows that snakes use the body heat generated by the shorebirds to rest their own temperatures by 10 degrees. Number 10 is the Eastern Coral Snake. Red touches black, friend of Jack. Red touches yellow, kill a fellow. That's the rhyme millions of school children learned to warn that the Eastern Coral Snake is best left alone. Ranging throughout the southeastern and Gulf coasts in the United States, the coral preys primarily on reptiles including other snakes. One of the few terrestrial venomous snakes in the United States with fixed, hollow fangs, it's even less prone to confrontation than the copperhead, making it America's less aggressive venomous snake. It's also a prime example of an evolutionary strategy known as Batesian mimicry. A harmless mimic in this case, several species of milk snakes takes on the physical appearance of a noxious model, the eastern coral snake, to protect itself from predators that have evolved to steer clear of red and yellow snakes. Thanks for your watching this video. When you subscribe to get more new videos. And don't forget like and share my channel. Thank you and have a great time!